Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's do a few simple examples to get a better feel of what the concept is of an arc and a central angle. So here we have the center angle which gives us the arc of 90 degrees. What is therefore the measure of the central angle? Well, since we know that the measure of the center angle is equal to the measure of the arc, it must therefore also be 90 degrees. How about here? What is the measure of angle 1 if the arc from there to there is equal to 42 degrees. Well, since we have a line here that crosses a circle and goes to the center, that must therefore be the diameter of the circle. And because of that, we know that the arc above the diameter and the arc below the diameter must therefore equal semicircles, which means that those arcs must therefore equal 180 degrees. And therefore, the measure of angle 1 plus 42 degrees must equal 180 degrees. So we can say that the measure of angle 1 plus 42 degrees must equal to 180 degrees. So if we subtract 42 degrees from each side, we get the measure of angle 1. I should say the measure of angle 1 here. And I forgot the M over here as well. So 180 minus 42 is 138 degrees. All right, what if we have something like this? Here we have two lines that cross the circle. They both go through the center of the circle, which means that they're both diameters, which means that the arc above that line and the arc below that line must be semicircles. Same for the arc above this line and below this line must be semicircles, which means that the angles here must add up to 180 degrees. The angles over here must add up to 180 degrees. And we know that if the measure of this arc is 110 degrees, that means the measure of this angle must be 110 degrees as well, which means that the measure of angle 1 plus 110 degrees must add up to 180 degrees. In other words, the measure of angle 1 plus 110 degrees must equal 180 degrees. So when we subtract 110 degrees from both sides, we get that the measure of angle 1 is equal to 180 degrees minus 110 degrees, which would be 70 degrees. Looking over here, here we have again a, a situation where we have two lines crossing from one end to the other end of the circle. They go through the center of the circle, which means that they're both diameters. Again, that means that one side is 180 degrees, the other side must be 180 degrees for both lines. Now, if the measure of this arc is 30 degrees, then what is the measure of the arc on the other side? Well, that would also be the measure of angle 1 right here. So we can actually, let's put a 1 there. And instead of finding the measure of the arc here, let's find the measure of the central angle. Now again, uh, we know that these two must add up to 180 degrees, which means that this plus this is 180 degrees. And since this is 30 degrees, that means this must be 150 degrees. We could put little degree symbols on there. And now the question is, what is the measure of this angle? What is the measure of this angle? Well, we know that the two together must be 180 degrees. And since this is directly across from this one, this must also be 30 degrees. And since this is directly across from that one, must also be 150 degrees. So in this case, when you have opposing angles like that, you know that the measure of angle 1 must also be 30 degrees. All right, now our fifth example here. Notice that we have three points, a point there, a point there, and a point there. This point delineates an arc, or these two points delineate an arc of 120 degrees. These two points delineate an arc of 120 degrees, so together that's 204 degrees, and when we go all the way around the circle, we know that's 360 degrees. So we know that this top arc here must be 360 degrees minus 120 degrees minus 120 degrees, which is 240 degrees, which equals 120 degrees, which means that the third arc must also be 120 degrees. And since it's the central, arc, central angle of this particular arc, so let's go ahead and put 120 degrees there, then we know that the measure of this angle must also be 120 degrees. All right, our sixth example. Here we have four points. We have point A, point B, point C, and point D, and we want to find the measure of angle 1, which runs, which is denoted by these two lines going from the central point, let's call that the central of the circle, let's call it R, and so from R to B and R to C, we know that this angle here is angle 1, we now want to know the size of that angle, the measure of that angle. But we're told here that the arc from A to B is congruent to the arc from B to C, which is congruent to the arc from C to D. Congruent means they have the same measure. 
And since all three of them must add up to 180 degrees, if there's three of them and they're all congruent and they must add up to 180 degrees, that means they all have to be 60 degrees. So this must be 60 degrees, this must be 60 degrees, and this must be 60 degrees so they can add up to 180 degrees and then they're all equal to one another. Which means that the measure of angle one, which gives us the middle arc from B to C, must therefore also be 60 degrees because we know that the central angle must equal, the measure of the central angle must equal the measure of the arc. And finally, when we look at over here, we have two arcs from A to B and from B to C. We're told that they're congruent. We're also told that this angle here is 90 degrees, and we know that the arc across from the central angle must also be 90 degrees, and we know that arc from A to B and from B to C, and let's call this point D to make it a little bit easier, and the arc from C to D must add up to 180. That means that arc from A to B and arc from B to C must add up to 90 degrees, and since they're congruent, two angles that add up to 90 degrees and they're congruent, they must therefore be 45 degrees. And so that's how we decide that these are 45 degree uh, arcs. And that hopefully gives you a much better idea of what we mean by arcs and central angles and the relationship between the two. And that's how it's done.